In this video, I want to go over the stuff that you see on the screen right now. This is not going to be an in-depth tutorial about each one of the tools, but I basically just want to show you how to set up all of this yourself, the tools that I use, how I set them up. This is probably going to give you inspiration and ideas on how to set up things on your site as well. The first thing that we see is the terminal, is what occupies most of the screen. Notice that here at the very top, you can see that this is ghosty. That is the terminal that I use. And is this part that we see on the screen, this entire section. Notice that it's separated in multiple splits, we could say. Here are two vertical lines. And we also see here other two vertical, well, these are horizontal lines. Notice that there are two arrows here that are pointing to where my cursor is at at the moment. So my cursor is here. So that is, we could say, the first thing that you see, Tmux in action. Let me switch to this Tmux window here, the number three, so that I can quickly show you how the panes work. So I'm just going to type here, Hyper F, that's the way that I configured it. And I'm going to press here the letter O, that is going to switch me to my window number three. And to create a split here, I just type Hyper F. And if I type this symbol here, creates a vertical split. If I want to create a horizontal split, I do the same thing, hyper F and this symbol here, and that does it. How do I switch between splits with control? So I just press control, H, L, K, and uh, J. So that's the way that I navigate between splits. Let me create another one here so you can see this easily. So we have here the four splits and I can switch around them. So that's basically what you see here on this screen. Three different splits in Tmux. Do I use Tmux only for the splits? No. Splits to me are more like an aesthetic thing, we could say. But I use Tmux to manage all my different sessions. And what is a session? It's basically a project. So if, for example, if I need to jump to my dot .files, I'm going to press here hyper TJ. That is going to take me to my dot .files. If I need to jump to my nodes, which is my Obsidian repo, it's hyper TU. If I need to jump back to my home session, hyper TH, and that is going to take me here. When do I use splits? Let me go to my dot .files latest session. These are just my dot .files. And if I type here, Alt T, that is going to bring a split on the bottom. If I type the same thing again, Alt T, it's going to hide it. So I just toggle a split here real quick by pressing that Alt T. That's the only time I actually use a Tmux split. This is not going to be a Tmux tutorial. So if you want to learn more about Tmux, I would highly recommend you to go and check this video out. And I go over all of this in detail. Remember that this video is just going to be a quick overview. I just want to see if you guys are interested in this type of content. So just let me know down in the comments if you want to see more like this or not. So now that we looked at the splits, let's see what we have here next in the list. The next option is this B top. That is the tool that you see here on the right split. So if I switch to that split here, Notice that the arrow here is pointing to this, to the right. So I'm in this split at the moment. And what is Btop? It's just a replacement for Htop, which is what I used in the past. Just shows you the stats for your computer, basically. Here's the CPU utilization, memory, network, and here are the different processes running. The configuration for Btop is in my dot .files. So if we jump back here and I search here for btop, here's the file, btop configuration file. Notice that I'm using a theme. This is a theme that I created, which has my different colors. And here are all the settings that I'm using in btop at the moment. Where is this file? In my dot .files. So you can find it there. So if we jump quickly to my dot .files and you type t here, you're going to be able to find btop. And here it is, btop.com file. That's where it lives. The theme, you will also be able to find it there. So if I open here mini.files, you're going to see here under themes. And here it is, btop theme. So you can grab that as well. Okay, so we already covered this btop. If you want to learn more about it, let me know down in the comments. Next, we have here fast fetch. If we go back to my home team accession, is the pane that you see here. Notice where the arrow is pointing to right now. So this is just a NeoFetch replacement. I used NeoFetch in the past, 
but I see that everyone is using now fast fetch. So it just gives you the stats on your computer, hardware, software, uptime. You can customize it to your liking. Let me show you where that file lives real quick. So if I jump back to my that files latest, I'm going to look here for fast, I think. Yeah, here it is. Fast fetch, config.json. Here is the file. Again, remember that it's in my dot files. Where is this file or where does it live? You can see the path to the file here and you can see the name of the file here as well. If you're a Tmux user the same way that I am and you want to see images there, you need to use this instead of Kitty Direct. I got this information from this link and this theme that I'm using for fast fetch is not something that I came up with. It's something that I grabbed from these dot files. So the credit goes to this person. All right, so that's enough about fast fetch. The other thing that we see next is simple bar. What is simple bar? It's the bar that we see here at the very top of the screen. Notice that I have 13 root packages that are outdated. Shows me the battery. Well, my computer doesn't have a battery. Input volume for my microphone, the volume for my audio device, the output audio device. I'm connected to Wi Fi and the date. And it also shows me the application that I'm on here and the macOS logo. So if I switch to another app, to the browser, for example, Notice that it shows that as well. I created a video about Simple Bar. I released it yesterday. I cover everything in depth in this video, how to install it and how to set it up. So go and check it out. You're going to notice that I also have another option right under Simple Bar. I have Sketchy Bar here, which is the bar that I used before Simple Bar. Let me switch to it real quick. So I'm just going to come here to this Tmux pane and I'm going to start it. Start Sketchy Bar. I'm going to hit enter here to start it. Notice that sketchy bar shows there on the top and I'm just going to quit the other bar that I have on the background, which is simple bar. So I just need to come here to the top of my screen and I'm just going to quit out of this application. Notice that this is the bar that I have now, which is sketchy bar. I also cover sketchy bar in the other video. If you want to learn more about it as well. There are other bars that you can use, but those are the ones that I have been playing with sketchy bar and simple bar. Out of the two, I think I prefer sketchy bar, but we'll see. The next thing that we have here on the list is Skitty Notes, and that is the little application that you see here on the right hand side. This is where I'm marking my tasks as done. And this is where I have like a sticky notes app for stuff that I have to do for the day or different days. So if I want to switch to that application, notice here my left hand side, I'm just going to type here the right arrow and that is going to automatically switch me to that. If I want to mark a task as done. I just type here Alt X that is going to mark it as done and it's going to show it here at the bottom of the file. So notice here, this is the one that I just marked as done and it shows me the time, date and time in which I completed the task. Again, I already released a video on how to set this up. I explain everything in full detail there. So if you want to learn how to do that, go and check this video out. What else do we see on the screen? Notice that we have Starship right now. So what is that Starship? It's just my prompt. If I switch back here to Ghosty on the left hand side, and this is Starship. Notice that it shows me the username, the date, the branch that I'm on right now. If I have any GitHub pending changes in this repo, it also shows me the path that I'm on here. And if I'm working in a Kubernetes cluster, if you work, for example, with multiple different Kubernetes clusters, you always want to know which cluster you're working with. So it shows it here in parentheses. In my home lab, I only have a single cluster. So that's why you don't see anything here. I don't even know if my Kubernetes cluster is working at the moment. Let's see. kubectl get nodes. Let's hit enter here. No, I haven't accessed it in a while, but it comes handy, especially if you work with Kubernetes at work. Again, where is this Starship configuration at? If we go back to my dot files, you're going to notice here Starship and uh, here active config that tumble. This is a dynamic file that I create from another script. I have a color scheme selector. That's the way that it's called. And it allows me to switch the colors everywhere, not only in the terminal, also in Skitty nodes, also in sketchy bar at the top in Tmux. The video for the color scheme selector is here. If you want to learn how that is done, go and check it out. It's a bit advanced because it's bash scripts. But if you want to grab my Starship config, here it is. And remember that it's in my dot files. 
So now that we covered this, let me mark this as done. Notice that the next item here is Ghosty Transparent. So if I switch back here to Ghosty, to my home TMAX session, notice that you can see the image in the background. You can see it a little bit here. There's the dragon. If I click here, you're gonna be able to tell this is the background image. And if I click here again, it's just gonna show me Ghosty. So we can see that image in the background. How is that possible or how do I do that? I do it with my window manager, which is called Yapai. And I'm gonna let you know how to set that up in a minute. If you're not using Ghosty yet, and if you would like to give it a try, I have a video as well in which I go over everything in detail. And you'll be able to find that video here, how to set up Ghosty Terminal. Released it three months ago, but I explained my setup in full detail there. All right, so moving on to the next item, I'm just gonna mark this as done. I'm just going to mark this as done as well. And uh, what other tools are part of my workflow that we don't see here on the screen, but are very important. One of them is Yabai, which is my window manager. Let me jump to my dot files real quick. And I'm going to open here, Yabai, Yabai RC. This is the file in which I configure Yabai. Notice that I call other scripts at the very top here. I source this other file. And there's a lot of stuff going on with Yabai. But what is this used for? It just manages my windows. If for example, I try to make Ghosty smaller, just gonna grab my mouse here, gonna make it smaller here. Notice what happens. It switches back to the same size or to the size that I specified, actually. If I switch to another application, here is my browser. I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Just gonna make it smaller. You're gonna notice that the same thing is going to happen. Yabai is also the one that allows me to set applications transparent. So that's why you see my terminal transparent and it basically manages my windows. I keep a single application on the screen at a time. There are other Yabai modes. There's BSP, which opens each application in a section of the screen. So if you set it to BSP mode and you open a second application, it's gonna occupy half of the screen. Half of the screen for one app, half of the screen for the other app, and you have to be managing applications. So you have to be moving your terminal to a different desktop, browser to a different desktop, and it's just a pain. I don't like that. I like keeping all of the applications in the same desktop, and I just switch between the apps using key maps. I released a video about Yabai recently. This was two months ago. It's just my configuration updates as of 2024. So if you wanna learn about Yabai in depth, go and check this video out. So as you remember, I told you that I switched between each one of the different applications. So here I'm in Ghosty. I wanna go to the browser. I wanna go to YouTube. What else can I show you? Uh, can I cannot show you other applications, but I just have a key map for each one of my applications. If I type here HyperTE, notice that this team accession was open and you're gonna see the different apps that I have key maps created for. If I wanna switch to OBS, it's HyperAO and so on. But I don't use Carabiner only for that. I do way more stuff with it. So if you want to learn more about Carabiner, I have a video. I released an updated version two months ago. I go over every single key map that I have. I would highly recommend you to check it out because I cover a lot of different stuff. Just to give you an example, if I want to copy something, I just tap left command. So that sends control C. And if I want to paste it, I just tap this other key, which is left option. And that sends control V or command V in Mac OS. So go and check that video out. And I explained that as well there. Tmux is essential for my workflow. As you noticed, I have sessions for basically every single different project. Here is this Carabiner rules file, which is a session by itself. My dot files is a different session, my home session, my notes. This is my blog post and I have key maps for each one of them. So let's say that I want to switch to my blog post real quick. I just type here hyper TL and it's going to switch me there real quick. If I want to go back to my notes, hyper TU which is me to my Obsidian directory, which is basically my notes, hyperTJ, my dot files, hyperTH, go back to my home session. So all of that is done with Tmux, but I also use Carabiner for that. So I would highly recommend you to check the Tmux and the Carabiner videos. And finally, the tool that I use the most of the day is NeoVim, which is my editor. It's the tool that you see here on the screen. This is where I edit basically all of the different files that I have in my dot files, in my notes, my blog post, basically everywhere. I have a lot of videos about NeoVim. 
I have a lot of different articles about NeoVim as well. The most recent video, if you want to learn how to start editing Markdown in NeoVim, I will recommend you to check this out. Released it six days ago. And I go over each one of the Markdown tips that I have and my entire Markdown workflow in NeoVim. So if you're just getting started with NeoVim, Markdown is the way to go at the beginning. And this is a good video for you to watch. So again, remember that this video is just an overview of the stuff that I use in macOS and my workflow, and also the stuff that you see on the screen at the moment. If you want to learn more about a specific subject, let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments as well. Let me know if you like this video, and I hope it was useful. I'll see you in the next video.